Today I'm going to talk about a complex Gaussian integral and the reason why it's complex is because there's an i here in the exponent. Usually with a Gaussian uh, distribution type integral you just have ax squared and there's no i here. So here I'm going to calculate this particular integral which as a nice bonus will generate the Fresnel integrals. Okay, so we're going to integrate this using this contour here that you see over here. Okay, so let's start with that. Let's rewrite the integral i and it's an integral from minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus i a x squared dx and the target is to calculate this and I'm going to use a contour for that as I already stated and the contour again is depicted over here and I'm going to define an f z function as follows so my i x becomes a z here and that will be equal to the fc function okay so that is the function I'm going to use in the contour to calculate this integral okay and if you just do the contour without residues there are no residues in here because this is, a, this is an analytic function everywhere this one this fc that I defined here is analytic over the full complex uh, plane so there's no residues here so the right hand side usually of the residue theorem will be zero in this case okay so now let's try to work this out so we have essentially four different curves we have to calculate there's a c1 curve of fcdz there's a c2 curve there's a c3 curve of course and then there's the c4 and those added up need to result in zero let's first focus on c1 and c3 so we're going to focus on this one and on this one and what we will see and find out if if r goes to infinity and that's what we need because we need the integral from minus infinity to infinity according to this right we will see that these pieces will go to zero how can you see that well let's focus on the fc function here minus ac squared and let's rewrite this out into a cosine and a sine okay so the c can be written out in a cosine phi plus i sine phi and we need to square that okay so if you work that out you get minus i a cosine squared phi minus sine squared phi which is not so interesting here because there's an i in front of it and a is a real number so that will give you something that is of amplitude 1 right and of obviously we have to put an r squared here right because we look at the, this curve and we look at this curve so there's an r cosine phi plus r sine phi times i okay so you quadratize that and you get the r squared here so we're going to put the r squared in front of it here and there's another piece so we can do that with a dot minus i a r squared that's the interesting part and that's essentially cosine phi sine phi times 2 times i okay so if you quadratize if you work this out these are the cross terms and this is what you will get and that gives you overall e to the power minus i r squared times 2i i times i is minus 1 so that will give you a plus 2 okay so it will give you a plus 2 a r squared times cosine phi times sine phi right and now we can see why we used actually this and this type of curve here because in this case right cosine phi is x in the complex domain right and sine phi is y so you now see that for this curve this value here will be negative okay so if you take the limit r to infinity this is always negative for this piece of the curve 
So this will go to zero. And as a consequence, the, the product here will also go to zero, right? Because this is just a complex number times something. So as a consequence, C1 is zero, okay? So now we determine that, that C1 is zero. Same for C3 here, cosine phi is minus x. So that's negative in this case, right? So this is a negative number always for this type of the curve. And sine is positive, right? So again here, this will be negative. If in the limit when r goes to infinity, that will also be zero. So C3 will also be zero as a consequence, okay? So now let's focus on uh, the C2 curve. So C2, for the C2 curve, Z equals, essentially, if you look at this carefully, this is a 45 degree angle, by the way. So this is pi over 4. Okay. We will have something like y equals minus x, right? If you look at this, this line here, this is a y minus x type of line. And since z is x plus i y, right, in the complex plane, this is nothing more than x minus i x. Okay, so z is nothing more than x 1 minus i. And that's what c is here. Okay. So now we determined z, and now we can fill that out into c2. So let's do the c2 part. The C4 part, in fact, is the part we need, right? That goes from minus infinity to infinity, and we call that I. So we can already write that down. We can say I, right, plus the C2 integral, right? So that's the C2. Let's write it out one more time for clarity. So this is what we need to calculate, and that is C2 in this case now goes from plus r to minus r when z equals x 1 minus i. So here follows from that dz is nothing more than dx 1 minus i. Okay, so we can replace the dz here by dx 1 minus i multiplication and then the exponent e to the minus i a z also needs to be replaced with x squared and 1 minus i squared in the exponent, okay? So if you work out 1 minus i, you square that, you get 1, you get minus 1 from the minus i squared, and you get minus 2i. So you're ending up with minus 2i over here. So we can rewrite this into i, plus, plus, and I'm going to already take the limit, infinity to minus infinity over here, okay, e to the, and then x squared, of course, minus a times i times x squared times minus 2i over here, minus 2i times dx, times 1 minus i. Okay, so we filled everything out. i squared is minus, so what we get here is i plus the integral between infinity and minus infinity. And note that this is the other way around than what we would like to see here. So we will get another minus sign somewhere. This we can now write out as minus 2ax squared dx times 1 minus i, okay? And this we should recognize. This is just a Gaussian integral, right? This gives you pi over 2a, but with a minus, of course, because this is uh, turned the other way around, okay? This integral from minus infinity to infinity gives you this, so if you turn it around, it gives you a minus over here, okay? So now we get i minus the square root of pi over 2a times 1 minus i equals 0, right? Because the, the whole contour, the sum of the four parts, have, has to be 0, okay? 
So let's continue. So what we now found is that, and let's re rewrite it for clarity, i minus, and then we have the square root of pi over 2a times 1 minus i equals 0. Okay. And that gives us the integral that we can now, and let's write it out, what it really is. This integral now equals 1 minus i, and we can rewrite that as the square root of 2 times e to the minus i pi over 4, right? Because this is just a complex number that lives in the complex plane, 1 to the x direction minus 1 to the y direction. The length of this factor is the square root of 2, and the angle is minus pi over 4, okay? That's the angle over here. So you can rewrite this piece as that. The minus goes because we go to the other side. So this essentially times pi over 2a is the answer, right, of your integral over here. Now you can work it out a little bit more, of course. You can say, okay, I'm going to take the square root in here. That's 2 pi over 2a. And I'm also going to take the square root of... Uh, I'm going to take this under the square root, and then you can write it as pi over 2 instead of pi over 4. And if you do that, you get pi over a times minus i, and that gives you pi over i a. Okay, and that's your answer. That's the answer to the integral. So if you integrate this, you get this as the answer. Okay. Now we can write this out a little bit more as a side effect because we get the famous Fresnel equations out of this also. We can write this out as minus infinity to infinity cosine ix squared plus i sine minus, sorry, minus, because there's a minus here, psi ix squared, sine, yeah, times dx equals and I'm going to write it out in this form, pi over a, and then we're going to write this out as cosine pi over 4, minus i sine pi over 4, okay? So that's what we get here. And now we can essentially compare real and complex values. So now we get the following integral over here, ax squared dx, which is nothing more than the square root of pi over a times, and that's a half the square root of 2, right? Cosine pi over 4. Now you find, usually you find the Fresnel integrals in a form like this. 0 to infinity, cosine x squared dx, and with a certain value, right? Now we can do this too, because, hey, it's symmetric with respect to x, so this integral is essentially twice the size of this integral when a is 1, okay? So you can say, okay, if you put a half in front of it, that's a fourth instead of that. And you get 2 pi and a is 1. So you get the Fresnel integral as a consequence between 0 and infinity, cosine x squared, dx is now that value, okay? And there you go. There you have it. Acting up a little bit. That's that one. And you can do the same for sine. You can also say 0 to infinity sine x squared, if my pen uh, is willing to cooperate. Right? And that's a similar calculation, and you get ex actually the same value. Okay? And there you have it. Okay, it's not cooperating, but you get the picture. So that's for sine, that's for cosine, which I think is really cool that you have this kind of side thing that you get these nice integrals out of, the Fresnel integrals, which are quite famous actually. So okay, I think this is a great place to stop. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, and like, and I'll see you in the next one.